Tom Clark's main event is a Boink Studios production. And now, on with the show. This is Daddy's show. Step off. Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome to the program, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tom Clark, and this right here is Tom Clark's main event. What's up, kids? Welcome back to the program. How was everybody's turkey day last week? I had a good one. I had two good ones, actually. I had a little something-something on Sunday and a little something-something on turkey day itself. So it was all good. I hope you and yours had... uh, Great little small get-togethers. See, very small, because we're all trying to be safe, yes? So I hope you and yours had uh, a great holiday week slash holiday weekend. Uh, We all went back to the real world this week. Some of it was great. Some of it was not so great. We've got bunches of stuff to talk about today. A jam-packed show, as always, even more so this week. Tons of stuff to talk about. Let's get the ticker ticking. There it is. And we've got the brands up in the corners here today. Let's get some hellos out of the way right now. First to the plate today, Sandy in Germany. What's up? Hello, my friend. Russell, what's up, my man? Glad to see you again. Hello, Shannon. How are you? Christopher, what's going on? Eric, what's going on, man? Uh, Hey, man. Well, guess what, Eric? You're around today. That's pretty cool. There you go. Miss Lopez, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. What's up, Ryan? In an ER bed waiting for his appendix to be taken out. Ryan, you're a true fan. Ryan Buchanan is a true fan. Okay? You're the man, Ryan. Holy God. Take the phone and hold it up for the nurses. Do it for me, Ryan. I know you will. You ready? What's up? Tom Clark here at Tom Clark's main event. Uh, and if on their off chance, there's any nurses or doctors in your room right now, probably there's not, but if there is, thank you from all of us to all of you out there doing the work, putting the work in, putting your lives on the line every day, take care of the sick people, man. Uh, you guys, uh, we can never say thank you enough. So there you go. I felt the need to put that out there. Ryan, good luck with surgery, my friend. I'm sure everything will go great. So. Ryan, you're awesome. You get the no prize this week, brother. Check your mail. It's on the way. Uh, Let's see. Let's get out a few more hellos before we start in hard and heavy today. Uh, Let's see. We've already got some people talking about the headlines. What's up, Robbie? Carlos Martinez, what's going on? Mark, what's up? Wu-Tang for life, Ray. You know it, brother. So uh, what's up, Andy? Hope you're doing good, my friend. Uh, let's see. Cherie says, OMG, good morning from sunny Northern California. I hate you already. <laughs> I'm in dreary, cold North Carolina. So we're going to get there. I promise you with your headline. Trust me. What's up, Dave? Doing good, my friend. Glad you're hanging out. So, yes, um, uh, like I said, action packed show here today. Tons of stuff to talk about. Uh, uh, Ryan, it's all good, man. Thank you for that. Ryan's the man, dude. Everybody wish Ryan well during his surgery. So if you could just have the show playing during your surgery, as long as it wouldn't be a nuisance to the doctor. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. We don't want to make any mistakes. So uh, Shannon is Shannon is in Southern California as well. Shannon, I hate you as well. I'm just kidding. All right, no more time to waste. Let's get on with the show here today, folks. To all of you Wrestling Rumors gang who are watching, who maybe have never watched the show before, welcome. I'm Tom. This is my show. Glad you could hang out. To all of the regulars who tune in just about every single week, a big hearty thank you to you. A hearty handshake. A laurel and a hearty handshake. Where are my Blazing Saddles fans at today? All right. There you are. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, you know, I, I don't like to start the show off on a negative note. 
We're going to talk about the legendary Pat Patterson to kick the show off today. Um, I feel it only fitting uh, to cover this. Um, Pat Patterson passing away this week uh, at the age of 79. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's, uh, I would love to sit here and, and give a eulogy, but I'm going to be honest with you about something here, kids. Pat's career has spanned. So, I mean, he debuted in 58. He was connected to the business. I would say the entire time since 1958. Okay. What he meant to this business, what he means to the men and women involved in it, to everyone's lives that he touched along the way, to WWE as a company, to everyone's careers he influenced, to every talent that he worked with, uh, down to every fan that ever cheered for him or respected him. Um, Tom Clark's main event sends his deepest condolences. There's not a lot. There's a lot you can say, but there's not a lot of ways to do it justice. I thought the video package that would be put together was very well done. Uh, him singing My Way by Frank Sinatra and Frank's version playing in the background as well and then sort of harmonizing together, I thought was a nice touch. Um, he did do it his way. Uh, Pat Patterson, groundbreaking, trailblazing, trailblazing. And the first openly, I don't well, was he the first maybe openly gay man in the wrestling business? I don't know about first, but um, he was open about it. And, you know, I, I'm reminded of, and this is sort of off topic, but I, I'm reminded of uh, an old um, uh, showcase of the NBA at one point that I was called NBA at 50. They were celebrating the 50th year of the league. And I, I, I am, I am, I'm blanking on the player that said this, but you know, he, he, he mentioned that, um, you know, color and race and all that it's, it's a big, it's a big deal in the outside world, obviously. But when it comes to athletes, when it comes to major sports, if you can play, you can play. And yes, the race thing is still a, an issue, I guess, you know, in locker rooms or whatnot over the years, whatever. But the respect comes if you can play, if you can contribute. I'm not saying the rest of it goes away, but if you're valuable and you're doing your part and you're contributing, then that's kind of what matters. I would dare say that that's the case for Pat without putting words into anyone's mouth, because I'm not trying to do that here. But I would dare say that that would be um, the case for that. And and. Uh, from what I've read and heard over the years, a lot of the the sentiment has been, look, um, uh, you know, we knew about Pat. And when Pat finally started telling people, it's like, OK, what else you got? Because they didn't care at that point. They knew what he brought to the table. They knew how much heart he had for the for the sport and they knew how much he brought. So that was really all that mattered. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, uh, it, it's a shame to see it. Shame to hear about it. Uh, yes, uh, Mark uh, points out the first Intercontinental Champion. Absolutely right. Um, Nate Dog in the house. Everybody say hello to Big Nate Dog. Um, thank you, brother. So uh, yeah, he was. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, kids, despite what anyone says, sexual orientation, race, color, creed, cultural background. Yes, they are identifiers. They are who you identify as, what you identify as. Okay. I totally get that. But at the end of the day, we're all people, right? Have have common decency and, and be not only good to your fellow man or woman, uh, but you know, I don't know, we're all in this together, right? Isn't that the what everyone says? It's the truth, man. So I think Pat was leaving proof of that. And I, I don't know what more I can do to to give him a send off. I'm sure that uh his closest friends and family um, and everyone that he touched over the years have, have said their piece or they'll, they'll be saying their piece very soon if they've not done it already. So, um, just imagine having the impact that this guy had, if you could at one point, as Shakespeare said, shuffle off this mortal coil, having touched that many lives and people will never forget you and what you accomplished and what you did for them and their own personal situation. I don't know a lot of people like that. I'm going to embarrass Nathan. Nathan is one of those people. Because he's touched so many lives. Do you know what I'm saying? To be able to say that, that's a big deal. Um, yesterday was hard for me. Yesterday would have been my sister's 33rd birthday. Sorry. Next Saturday will be a year that she's been gone. It's really hard. But, uh, uh, you know, we've. this is why we've got friends and family around us trying to support each other, which is not easy during the COVID situation. It is what it is. But, uh, um, uh, I sat in this very chair um, a little over a year ago and did the main event way before I was ready to do it. 
and I had the Santa hat on and I was crying my eyes out because she'd only been gone for a, a week and a half or something like that. Maybe two weeks. I don't know what it was. Um, and you guys saw that. So, uh, I feel like you guys have become part of the family. So, um, I appreciate, I've, I've gotten some kind words. I posted her picture yesterday and I got some kind words. Thank you for that. It means loads to me. So, uh, I got to move on <laughs> always forward, forward, always. Thank you everybody, uh, for saying what you said. And I appreciate the sentiment. Uh, let's make this show fun. Now we don't want to be a drag the whole hour. It's a heck of a segue, but I think Pat would approve. Sting is all elite. Dry those tears, kids, because the fun is just getting started. Holy God. So talk about this very chair. I sat in this very chair two weeks ago. Was it two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever it was now? And I made the comment that I think that Sting is going to eventually make an impact. Well, I think we were talking about full gears where we thought maybe he would be there. Um, and I sort of made that prediction. I didn't like writing in stone or anything. And then when it didn't happen, it didn't ruin my day. But at the end of the show, I was kind of like, man, I can't believe he's not here. This kind of sucks. So no, I'm not going to take credit for predicting anything. But I, uh, if I, if I told you I didn't see it coming in some form or fashion, I'd be lying. WWE took all of his merch off the site when he did not re-sign his legends contract because that's how they roll pal. So <laughs> it's all good, baby. The grass is greener, as a lot of people will tell you. And I love the fact that Sting is sort of the journeyman icon at this point. In the same year that we get the farewell to The Undertaker, he's it's his last last hurrah. It's his last ride, the, the technical last ride. That's it. He rides off in the sunset now. The Undertaker is no more. He has ceased to be, okay? Um, uh, in the same year that we get that, we get Sting in AEW. Well, shut up. Sting's character is different than Taker. Taker's character has to leave. Do you want to know why? Because the whole mystique around Taker was that he was there to begin with because when, when the persona of, the ta of Taker, when the mystique and all that stuff, he's here for business. He's not here to show up and point a bat at people. He's here for business. So that guy has to retire. See what I'm saying? The whole point of him being there was to come in, take care of business, bury the competition, you know, face the guys, bury them, whatever, and then be on his way. He comes in, there's a day of reckoning, and then he leaves. Okay. The Sting's character doesn't really need that. Sting can be a journeyman icon. You see what I'm saying? So it's a different sort of vibe. That's kind of what I was going through in my head yesterday. Shannon says, Sting, all, my all time favorite wrestler, I marked out so hard, everyone in my house thought I was crazy. Hey, I loved it. I'm with you. Carla says he's going to wrestle, doesn't have a neck injury from a while ago. That's why I retired. Uh, the word right now is that, Carlos, is that he is not going to wrestle. That's the word. That they won't be, uh, they won't be having him bump or anything like that. You never say never, because I'd love to see Sting versus Darby Allen, but I don't think we're going to see it. I've been wrong before, kids. Nay says Sting still looks like he can work too. Looks to be, yes, I agree with that. And in fact, I made the comment, dude, that even though he's covered in the trench coat and he's dressed all in black, um, he he looks to be in great shape. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Linda. Thank you for saying. I'm sorry for your loss as well. Um, Earl says, "What's your theory on staying in AEW? Will he wrestle Darby Allen? We were just talking about that, right? I'm trying to get uh, I'm trying to get um, uh, caught up on the comments here. I I don't think that he will work, but that's just me. Uh, like I said, I've been wrong before." Jeff says, I heard he was going to manage Darby. Could very well be. Yes, Chris, his merch is selling like crazy. He's broken all the records on ProWrestlingTees.com. Yes, Earl, you're completely right. That's the scuttlebutt right now is that he has signed a multi-year deal and they're going to use him on a regular basis. I'm sorry, kids. I, I believe it's good for that company. You can call it a ratings grab. We'll get to the ratings later. And wow, it made an impact, pun intended. <laughs> we'll get to that too. Um, you can call it a ratings grab, you can call it a cash grab, whatever you want to call it, it's fine. Sting will be good for that locker room. Forget the ring. Forget all that, if you can. He will be good for that locker room. Having Sting around, who has nothing to gain because there's no backstage politicking going on, he's not trying to keep his spot, he's not trying to keep his character, he's not trying to maintain his hold on the company or whatever, some such nonsense you want to say, this guy is there to give back. 
And Sting's a good person too. Forget the pro wrestling stuff. Go look up interviews about from him with him outside of the ring. He's a good guy. You know what I mean? And if he can bring something to the table and you know, he will. And if they want him there and you know, they do, it's going to be a great fit. It's going to be a great fit. And I love it. I think it's really good. Yes, Tim, he will speak Wednesday night. Tony Schiavone will interview him. Carlos is already talking about the next big thing. And, uh, <clears throat> One more thing about Sting. Yes, he looks great. Yes, the gear looks great. I'm so going to get that shirt. I love the snow. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if I'm being honest, the whole winter is coming thing, they totally had me fooled. I didn't know what it meant when the, when it went black. And I didn't honestly didn't even know. It's the truth, baby. Some prognosticator I am, eh? But I really didn't know. Uh, when they're playing that video and it showed a crow for like a split second and I'm sitting in my chair going, oh, what? And then boom, the, the word, the name, I was like, shut up. <laughs> Woo. I was fangirling like a madman. Let me just tell you, I can't help it. I can't help it, man. Uh, bu -bu 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 man, we got some. Uh, let's see. Mark says, "Sting some week as impact comes to same week." Yeah, you're right about that for sure. Uh, let's see what else we got going on. Everyone's talking about it. Let's talk about it. AEW and Impact Wrestling, the partnership that we didn't see coming. We kind of assumed that AEW at some point was going to start playing nice again with, with New Japan. We've, we've seen some hints dropped in the past several months. Tanahashi's face showed up on uh, Dynamite, congratulating Jericho on his anniversary. Um, you know, uh, Mox has flat out talked about being a champion on two continents. And, you know, we kind of thought, well, and I even predicted that Kenta was going to show up at some point. That still hasn't happened. Um, and, and we kind of thought, well, maybe they're going to start playing nice now with New Japan. Well, they did start playing nice with the company. However, it's Impact Wrestling. Wow. Um, insane. I, I don't really know what to say, kids. That that was... Uh, uh, first off, the match was good. I don't know that the match was great. I had a massive problem with the paradigm shift. And then instead of John going for the cover, he put two chairs in the ring and wanted to have a slap off with Kenny. Very odd. I, I don't understand that. Uh, it makes no sense to me if I'm being straight. And, but here's what I think saved it. Uh, the second paradigm shift, I think, saved it. Because then you could say, well, maybe John couldn't have pinned him after the first paradigm shift because he couldn't pin him after the second, right? Possibly. I don't know that it completely saved, but I think they did their best to. Whether that, that was the intention or not was covered up, I don't know. I thought the chair spot was highly unnecessary. This is just Tom armchair quarterbacking this whole match. Listen, it's whatever, dude. I mean, it's uh, it is whatever. So, Andrew says the slap off was great. I was fine with it. I just didn't want to take place after John's finisher. I thought that was bad timing. Bad timing. Uh, let's see. What's your thoughts on Omega and Don Callis? Uh, so watch Impact this Tuesday. It's what Callis said, right? I guess we'll see. We'll hear more. We'll get more. Impact's all over it, as well they should be. I said on Twitter that night, this is probably the highest rated episode of Impact in years. I'm sure it will be. <laughs> listen, this is good for the wrestling business. And listen, if you're not a fan, and I see some people talking, if you're not a fan of AEW, I respect what you're saying. Please don't think I'm ignoring you because I don't want to put your comments up. It's not that. It's just... You know, I completely see where you're coming from. It's not your taste. If you're a diehard WWE fan and that's your jam and every you just love everything about that company, go with God. If you're a diehard Impact fan, you don't want to watch anything else, go with God. I watch everything. Um, I don't always love everything. Um, sometimes I'm harder on some things than I am others. But that's how I roll. You don't have to roll like, like I do. It's completely your call. Completely your decision. So I respect your opinion. Anyone out there who doesn't agree with me, it's all good, man. You're not going to get me crying about it. It's all good. Mark says, I'm actually going to try to watch it. Same here. I want to see what happens. I don't want to see it in a playback. Uh, James talking about Lucha Underground. Lucha Underground was, uh, 
you know, it was an interesting product. It was different. It was, it was, um, uh, a, a niche product, I guess, if I could say that they were trying something very different than what all the other companies were doing. And I respected that, but their business model wasn't really working out. They went bankrupt, I believe is the story. And they owed a lot of town, a lot of money and the contracts were crazy hard to get out of. And at the end it kind of became a mess. So I hated to see all that happen for the talent and for that company. If I'm being honest, Robbie says, I think Sting will give the rest of the AW roster a chance to improve their skills in order to give NXT a run for their money. He will give the younger guys his wrestling experience on further, um, uh, to further AEW to be a powerhouse company, not necessarily crushing WWE. No, I don't see them trying to, to crush anybody. I, I just don't see that. I mean, it's, you know, I don't think they care about crushing anyone else. If they did, they wouldn't be working with Impact. Shannon says, AEW lets me down the least. In my opinion, Shannon, from where I'm coming from, my own personal perspective, I agree with you. And guess who's on my TV right now because I'm watching the playback? Cameron Grimes. Had to do it. I was going to do it later. I'm doing it right now. Nate says, Billy Corgan could be hailed as an all-time genius. If he can work with AEW Impact and NJPW to build a coalition to share talent, put each other's companies over, and reinstate the NWA title as the true world's title, <laughs> which can be held by either. Oh, my God. I'm loving that all day. I love that. What's up, Elvis? Thanks for joining us, my friend. Nathan, I love your thing. Let me put that back up so everybody can read that. Yeah, let's put the National Wrestling Alliance World Heavyweight Championship back on top. Can you imagine Nick Aldis versus Kenny Omega? Nick Aldis versus John Moxley. Nick Aldis versus anybody. <laughs> Good stuff, man. I I would love to see that happen. Whether or not it will, I don't know. It would seem like the AEW banner would be the one everybody would fly their flag under. Maybe I'm wrong. I'd love to see a return of the NWA to uh, prominence. That'd be great. Brennan says, I wish someone would work with ROH. You talk about Brennan being horribly mismanaged, horribly managed from the top down as Ring of Honor. They've had so much drama in that company over the past several years um, from a corporate standpoint. ROH, I don't want to see them go out of existence. And I, do they get slammed six ways from Sunday by people, don't they? I don't want to see that company go belly up. I just don't want to see it. I'm with you. I want to see somebody work with ROH. I want to see that company back uh, in the spotlight where they belong. They've got some great talent, that company, dude. Great talent. Are you kidding me? I want to see them rise back to prominence. They they need something. They They got to have something, man. Uh, Dave says, I'm a WB guy to me. A W is like watching WCW version two. go with God, Dave. I'm just, I'm telling you, brother, I can't restrict myself to one company. I won't do it. I did it for a long time. I'll never do it again. I can't, I just can't. I have to, I, I have to, you know, I have, I mean, I'm watching new Japan cause I enjoy it. I'm watching a W cause I enjoy it. I watch WB cause I can enjoy some of it. If I'm being honest. I haven't watched Impact in a long time because I followed it forever and it continuously let me down because uh, I wasn't happy with what I was watching. I know the product's gotten better in the past several months, so yeah, I'm probably going to give another chance. We'll see what happens. Uh, I enjoy MLW when I can catch it, you know what I mean, and that they're trying to get back to full strength again. I want to keep my options open. If if anybody doesn't agree with me, dude, that's, that's completely up to them. Uh, we could spend all day on this, couldn't we? The Briscoes are an RH, Chris. You're completely right about that. What's up, Shane? AEW's taking a history lesson from Shane Douglas and ECW. Interesting. Uh, WCW was good for a little while. Toward the end, it was good. I mean, honestly, when all the big players got there, there was a stretch of time there, Nate, when WCW was hard to watch. Like the very end, when it was impossible to watch after Russo got there. Yikes. But for a while, it was the hottest ticket in town, man. Hottest ticket in town. For sure. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pretend like I don't see that comment. Uh, tread lightly with the comment with the man fighting as a woman. Tread lightly with the comment. Okay. Let's be civil here. Be respectful. So... What's up, Jamel in Vegas? I missed that comment today, man. All right. 
We've got bunches of other stuff to talk about. Let's talk about the blue brand here, shall we? This is Tom's three SmackDown takeaways of the week. This is last Friday's SmackDown, as you all know. Um, Roman Reigns, Kevin Owens, Jey Uso, and Paul Heyman. I, this thing continues to be gold. Gold. I, I, I can go on and on and on about this angle. This is one. Of, this is the best thing going in WWE by far. Nothing they're doing compares to this. Nothing else. The whole Bray Wyatt Alexa Bliss thing is not half this big. Nothing else is as big in that company, in my opinion, than this. This is the hottest ticket they have going right now. It's 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 awesome, and um, I, I just I'm such a fan of it, dude. I love every minute of it. Joe in Houston, what's up, my friend? Uh, yeah, shout out to you, my friend. Uh, let's see. And it says the problem is with any non WWE promotion is the connection to history. Other than NJPW, they're all so new. The NWA brand gives them all legitimacy. Completely right. I love that point of view, man. Completely. Uh, Tim says Tom knows I'm probably the biggest AW fan. Uh, you probably are right about that. Yep. Uh, and see, Marcus is calling it Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns at TLC. Yes, absolutely. I'll be interested to see what goes down in that match. Um, I don't think they take the belt off Roman. I don't think it's anywhere close to that. I think he's going to have that thing for a good long time. Will you miss a lot of stuff? Sting came back. Uh, Kenny Omega won the world title and took off to Impact Wrestling. You missed everything, Will. How dare you? <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Ray says, love to see Big E get a push and get the Intercontinental belt. I, I'm all for that as well. I'm all for that as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, like I said, man, I just, I love this. I love this whole angle. Um, Roman has really come into his own. Roman Reigns right now is what WWE thought he was going to be in terms of being the hottest thing that they have. And honestly, at any given time the past several years, he's exactly what they thought they had. This is exactly what they thought they had, and they were wrong for a long time. And we all knew it, but we all kind of played along to humor the old man. But this is what Roman should have been doing from the jump. When the, the shield thing came to an end, he never should have turned face. I mean, the shield was face, but you get what I mean. He should have turned heel immediately and tried to take over. And, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty and all that stuff. But, you know, um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what more to say about it. It's, you know, Paul's being given the credit for a lot of this, as well he should. From everything we understand, he's been working behind the scenes. He's a genius on the mic, as he always has been. And it's freaking great, man. I love it to death. I really do. Shannon said, Jay, most improved wrestler 2020. Just by the the you know the the point of him being um uh, uh elevated next to his cousin if for no other reason and yes you're right he's completely come into his own now he may be tied directly to roman now but he's never looked more like an individual performer in my opinion i mean he just who knew that that spark was there how many of you guys could have predicted a year ago that jay uso had this in him be honest be honest man you know what i mean now he says the problem with any storyline with Roman is that it only leads to his inevitable showdown with The Rock. He's never going to be able to get out of that shadow. Where'd you go? Like this. You know what? You very well could be right. I still maintain we don't need to see The Rock versus Roman. I think Roman uh, should just stand on his own two feet. He's been doing it for a while. I mean, I mean, besides Paul, right? But I think he should continue to do what he's doing. And I, I don't think they need to, to bring The Rock back. I don't think it's necessary. I think every time they bring back huge past names for the biggest show of the calendar year, they're making a statement that the talent they have can't draw. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. And listen here. Listen here, you. Uh, if AEW begins to do that with their biggest show of the year, I'll say the same thing. Do you, do you or do you not trust the talent that you have to call the shots, to make the money, to draw the ratings, or do you believe that they're just incapable of that? So, Ray says Roman makes awesome heel. Uh, if he's going to crush Kevin, and I think he's keeping the belt unless the king of NXT, Adam Cole, <laughs> comes and beats him. I wish I know, it. but he's he's tied up with the whole war games thing and Pat McAfee and all that stuff. So, 
Dave says, what are the chances of Dean coming back to SmackDown? You're talking about Dean Am are you are you talking about Ambrose? Dave? Dean Ambrose is dead and buried. And the 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 person that couldn't be more happier about that is John Moxley. You know, let 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 that character stay gone. We don't need to see Dean Ambrose back. John's happy, he's healthy. Uh, I'm sure he's getting paid well. Uh, he's safe. Um, he's got creative input now. They actually care about what he says. He's being treated good. Yeah, I would leave that alone. I'd leave that alone. I don't think he has any desire. Alan, you missed the Sting conversation. You have to rewind it, my friend. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where are you? Andy says, one of the things I love about The Rock is that he stayed away from competing. Yeah, he's he's WWE for life. For life. For sure. We thought that about Jericho. We were wrong about Jericho, but it doesn't matter because, you know, rock is for life. Donnie says, I hate Pat McAfee. Think it's horrible. Hey, to each his own, man. If that's your, if that's your point of view, that's your point of view. I'm not in love with the guy. I think he's, I think he's gotten better by leaps and bounds. It doesn't think, it doesn't mean that I think he's the best. Segway. Let's go into the next uh, topic here. Daniel Bryan versus Sammy Zane. Sammy Zane. There it is. Or as I like to call it, more of this because man, this was fun. Where's Troy at today? Troy, are you hey, are you watching, bro? This is the more of this segment, kids. Uh, Sammy gushed on social media over Daniel as well. He should. Daniel can give anybody on the planet a great match. Uh, as of course for Sammy as well, because Sammy's good. Sammy's very good. So I really enjoyed this. And Anytime there's a really, really good match in WWE, whether it's on Raw or SmackDown, I feel like it needs to be talked about because I sometimes kids, I feel like they get so wrapped up in the angles and the storylines and the showtime that we kind of forget, or maybe they kind of forget, hey, it's a pro wrestling show. Let's put on a great pro wrestling match. So Timothy says, I don't know, but I feel the SmackDown women's division gets more better than the Raw women's brand. I agree with that. I still don't think it's great, but I think it's doing better. Daniel Bryan versus Fidel Castro wannabe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's different. I like Sammy. I've never been in love with Sammy, if I'm being honest with you. I've never been in love with him. Um, because there's a lot of things Sammy does in the ring that I think are, I have my own opinions on them. But I have that for a lot of the talent in today's pro wrestling game, if I'm being straight with you. It's nothing I can't live with. It's nothing I guess I'll have to live with. He's not going to change to suit me. Nate says they're both in shambles right now. Becky is missed. 100% Becky is missed. Absolutely. They've got like a new shirt for her called the, the mom instead of the man. I kind of like that. But yeah, they're missing her for sure. Andy says it feels like WWE is starting to get their... Whoa, Andy's cursing. Language, Andy. Feels like WWE is starting to get their stuff back together recently. Oh, and has some class. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're starting to get some traction again with some of their bigger players for sure. So, yeah. No word on Charlotte, Dave. I know she's been on social media lately, but I don't know if that means she's getting close to a comeback or not. We'll see. And Dave, again, this is not directed to you. I said this two weeks ago. Anybody asking about Charlotte, let's remember how much you wanted to see her when she's back and been back for six straight months and hasn't lost a match and wins every women's title. Because uh, everybody's a fan of Charlotte until she comes back and dominates and they look like it looks like they're handing her the company on the silver platter. Not you, Dave. I'm saying in general. Because I see that a lot. I see that a lot. You know what I mean? And I get some of the complaints if I'm being straight. I do. I get it. But then it's like the thing, you know, um, uh, Nate says not a curse word across the pond. It is here. Gosh darn it all to heck. <laughs> Shannon says, uh, uh, like I've said before, outside of Becky, Charlotte, Bailey, et cetera, if you're a woman in WWE, you want to be in NXT. Yeah, that's probably a good call. Uh, and he says, as soon as Becky and Charlotte come back, it'll be all of them again. So, yeah, probably so. For good, for better or worse, right? Second SmackDown takeaway of the week. Actually, the third. 
Friday night Mysterio. Mysterio family reigns supreme. Uh, I'm tired. I'm beyond tired. I love Ray. I think his kid's got potential. I had my fill of this on, on week two. How badly did WWE want to keep Rey Mysterio from going to AEW? So badly that they agreed to put his whole family on TV every single week. Am I wrong? You think this was planned well before Ray's contract came up? What do you think? Maybe. Hey, how do I know? I'm not in the meeting room, WWE. You're not either, right? We're all guessing. We're all uh, guesstimating and speculating and guestulating. Is that a word? Maybe I'll make it one. You get it, right? That's how badly they want to. You think Ray's not valuable to Vince McMahon? Think again, baby. That's how badly they want to keep. They didn't just pay the guy. They put his whole family on TV, and they're working with Dominic. And Dominic's getting the benefit of, you know, of national television exposure every week. This kid's headed for big things, man. That's how badly they want to keep Rey Mysterio in WWE. So, Andrew, to my knowledge, Amazing Red is retired. To my knowledge. Doesn't mean he won't come back, but that's my that's my belief. Shane says, going back to Impact and AW, Taz should have went with Omega to Impact and have Kenny drop the AW title and pick up the raw the FTW belt and raise it like Shane Douglas did. Eh, I get it. But, you know, if we repeat history too much, it just becomes a carbon copy, right? Uh, Elvis trying to throw me some trivia. How many wrestlers have been in WCW, WWE, TNA, and AEW? Name them. Oh, God, dude, I can't do all that. Sting. Sting. Um, God, I, I can't do all that. Dustin. I think. Yeah. I can't play this game with you. It takes me all day. Mark says Ray is my favorite Jedi. Well done. Uh, Ray, from everything I've heard, according to Bubba Dudley, or Bully Ray, as the kids call him now, Taz is in no condition to work a match or, or anything else. We'll see. Uh, Ray resigned the conditions that his son Dominic gets pushed. They didn't agree to it, give him a push, and Ray was going to... Yeah. Well, Earl, yeah, that's kind of what I was saying. But that's look, they could have said no. Earl, that's what I mean, bro. They could have said no to that. They didn't. That's how much they want to keep this guy around. So, there you go. Um, Let's get to the red brand, kids. The three raw takeaways of the week. Drew McIntyre versus AJ Styles at TLC. This is going to be a very good match. A very good match. You guys know it. They know it. We all know it. AJ is the primetime player himself. He's phenomenal. Drew McIntyre has proved all the critics wrong. He's exactly what we all thought he was going to be and so much more. It's such a shame he's not in front of live audiences, packed houses. Such a shame. Um, Because the guy is so good. This match is going to be fun. AJ will make sure of it, and Drew's going to step up like he always does. I'm looking forward to this. It's absolutely going to be the highlight of the show, um, and it'll probably be the best match of the night. So, um, Ms. Lopez says, I agree. AJ versus Drew is going to be awesome. Absolutely. Mark says, AJ is one of the best. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Thomas McCann with an ROH question. What do you think of Jay Briscoe and AC3 feud? Real quick, Thomas, since you asked. EC3 went from having nothing and having a pretty intriguing character to having everything he wants to do, and it feels like it's too heavy-handed. I said it. My opinion. Doesn't mean I hate the guy. It doesn't mean I'm right. It's just my own personal take. 
when I see him in RH now, it feels too heavy handed. His, his character feels like, I don't know, it's thick. It's very thick. Does that make sense? He's, he's laying it on very thick. If that's, that's what I'm trying to get at. That's okay. I guess if it works, I don't know that it's working for me. Doesn't mean I hate the guy. I love that he's in great shape. I know he's a good worker. I love that he's got some freedom and he's got freedom to explore. I'm not in love with it. I'm not in love with it, if I'm being honest with you. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, Andy says, AJ taking this title? I don't believe so. Ray says, if Lana wins the belt, I'll puke. Nate says, Get ready to puke. He's going to puke. <laughs> Don't get me started on Lana. If you get me started on Lana, something very interesting is going to happen. If you get me started on Lana, you know what's going to happen? Hot garbage. I don't care. I said it. Not to her. Relax. I can't talk to Lana anyway. She blocked me on Twitter years ago. I don't know. It's not to her. It's to the creative around her that think that the best way to get her over is by making her look like a chump every single week. That's what I think. You asked. I told you. Don't shoot the messenger. And if you do, make it count. Okay? Because <laughs> if I get back up, you know the rest. You don't know the rest. I'm just joking. Jamel says she can take a bump though, Tom. I can take a bump, Jamel. But if I got punked out on TV every week, would you think that's putting me over and got made to look like a weak chump? And would you think I'm getting over? Would that be your plan to get me over? A lot of people can bump. My kid can bump. I'm just saying. I'm, Nathan can bump. Ask him. He'll tell you how hard the ring is. He'll tell you. It's the truth, baby. It doesn't mean anything. Lana shouldn't be a wrestler. I'm so, I don't want to get off on this. Lana shouldn't be wrestling. Lana should be a valet slash manager. That's well, that's what that's what she's good at. This whole wrestling thing, if it's her idea, they should talk her out of it. And if it's their idea, she should talk them out of it. She's not going to. Money, 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 money. I'm saying. Just saying. Nathan said it from his lips to the ears of God. Yes, it sucks. The ring doesn't get better. Well, it gets better, but it takes a long time. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Ray says, as long as a train wreck and they're treating her like dog poo. Ray's not pulling any punches here, kids. So, bu, 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 bu. Andrew says, I can think of uh, many of, I can think many of women's wrestlers who deserve the title way more than shots than way more title shots than Lana. We all can, man, but it's, we're not booking it. Unfortunately for all of us, we're not booking it. Right. I know it's weird, but I don't get it either. Trust me when I tell you that. So, uh, let's see. Third takeaway. From wrong. Styles versus Lee versus Riddle. More of this. Where are you? Here. More of this. Um, it's uh oh, there we are. <laughs> it's good stuff, yes. Solid match, very good match. Matt Riddle is the biggest joke ever now because he's a blithering idiot. He's exactly the kind of what's up, brah, surfer dude that we all hoped he wouldn't turn into. Come close if you can't hear me. This is important. You don't have to look at me. Just put the speaker up to your ear. I'm about to school you. You ready? We all knew when he was at NXT, this was going to happen. We all knew that they weren't going to take him seriously. This guy's a trained MMA fighter. Okay? But he's howdy duty now. It's the truth. And that's okay. If that's what he wants, it, it is what it is. Now, you don't know if he's happy because you don't know Matt Riddle. I'm guessing none of you do. Neither do I. 
right? So I couldn't tell you if the guy's happy or not. You know when we'll find out? When the day comes that he's no longer working for Vince McMahon, then we'll find out if he's happy or not. We'll find out. We found out about all the rest of them, didn't we? We'll find out. From a distance, it's a circus, and he's ridiculous. But this match proves, if nothing else, this guy is insanely talented. The three of these guys had an excellent match. Just saying. Andrew says, Riddle is the carnival boy in the movie where the Millers. No regrets. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was regrets. Regrets. Wasn't it? Uh, you're getting this. You're getting this mixed up with the commercial where the big dude was getting the tattoo and she misspelled the word because in we're the Millers. It was regrets. Uh, R E G R A T S. Regrets, right? I get your saying. I get your joke. It's good. It's I like it. No regrets, because they're like you kind of spell it. Nah, man, no regrets. That's me. You know what I'm saying? That movie's not great. I'm just saying. Nate says Matt Riddle's gimmick is RVD behind the curtain and vice versa. Yeah, I agree with that. Matt Riddle, now his gimmick. Oh, did you hear that sound effect? That meant to happen. If it's live, it meant to happen, right? Um, his gimmick is RVD turned way up without a governor on it. That's what it is. Uh, RVD after way too much weed. I'm just saying. Ray says, why does Keith Lee talk funny? That is his gimmick, Ray. It's been his gimmick for a long time. It's just his cadence. That is how he talks. Let me tell you what I'm thinking. That's how he talks. That's kind of what he is. It's what he does. Mark says people don't give real enough credit. He has talent to the ring, but his gimmick is horrible. No, no, Mark. We give him enough credit. That company doesn't. Because they want a clown. They don't want a former MMA fighter. They want a clown. Well, they're getting him. That's what they want him to be. That's what he's going to do. Call like I see it. Robbie says, Royal Rumble is known for surprise entries in the Royal Rumble match. Who do you think would make a surprise entry in 2020 on Royal Rumble men's women's? I don't know. Probably NXT talents. Um, yeah, I don't know. Dave, thanks for hanging out, bro. See you next time, man. So, uh, uh, good question, Rob. I don't know, man. I mean, it's, you know, for that company, they, they're in the business of collecting talent. Ronnie, very true. And what the ironic part of Ronnie of your comment is, they always claim that they get the 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 talents to uh, give their input. But I mean, I have a hard time believing that. Kids, I have the third raw takeaway for you, and it's a big one. And if you have not braced yourself, and if you haven't heard the news, I want you guys to buckle up, pull up your socks and hose and pull. Are you ready? Reckoning is Mia Yim. Did you hear what I said? Read read it. Here. Reckoning is Mia Yim. Oh my God. Dude. You know how I know? Her mask fell off. I'm watching this match and I'm like, it's the mysterious reckoning with the otherworldly retribution. They're dangerous, pal. Oh, look at them. They're dangerous. And they got this chick with the blue hair and stuff. And she's got the thing on her face and stuff. And I always thought, God, she look at her. She's so mysterious. Who is this mysterious stranger that's now in retribution? What dark corner of the globe did they find this unbelievably dangerous talent in? Well, it turns out. It's hot garbage. I meant me a yim. That's what happened to the, how, why did I hit the button? Ah, I'm sorry. My finger slipped. Reckoning is Mia Yim, kids. Who saw that coming? Here's the funny part. Michael Cole doesn't know it. Wonder how I know? Because he didn't say anything. Hot garbage. 
Now I'm going to do it just because I'm annoyed. As we say all the time on this show, I don't hold Mia Yim or any of the talents responsible for such sad nonsense. I don't. And if you do, you're silly to do it. This is a train wreck of epic proportions. Epic proportions. And they took Ali, who we have all thought very highly of over the past year, haven't we? And stuck him at the head of it. Here's this train wreck, Ali. Good luck, pal. Just saying. Nathan's asking who had the better disguise, Reckoning or the Midnight Rider? The Midnight Rider, baby. Don't be playing about that. Don't be joking. <laughs> Man, I love doing this show. Jeff says, to be honest, Tom, we all knew it was going to be a train wreck from the start. We had hoped that they were going to be able to salvage it. Who would have thought that the Dark Order, from the beginning, we all said, <laughs> Right? Who would have thought? Look at him now. Just saying, man. Just saying. Oh, Shannon. I'm going to make that happen. Do you hear that, Nathan? I have a project to get to in the next few days. I'm going to get a can. I'm going to do I'm, I'm doing it. I'm so doing it. Thank you for the inspiration, Shannon. I'm so doing it. That way I can just hit the button. It's great. I'm there. It's happening now. All right, we got, uh, we're not even, man, what time is it? Holy God, it's 12.54, look out. This week's SmackDown rating, <laughs> 1.987, compared to last week's 2.326. Uh, Raw, down uh, up slightly, 1.741. I'm sorry, down slightly from last week's 1.81 million. Let's get hit real quick on the NXT uh, preview. Uh, let's talk just a little bit about it. Here's the card thus far. Tommaso Ciampa versus Timothy Thatcher. Dexter Loomis versus Cameron Grimes. There you go. In a strap match. NXT North American champion Leon Ruff versus Damian Priest versus Johnny Gargano. Triple threat match. Team Shotzi versus Team Candice in a War Games match. And the Undisputed Era versus Pat McAfee, Pete Dunne, Oni Lorcan, and Danny Burch in a War Games match. That is your NXT War Games preview. I think it's going to be fun. We will see what happens. That's all the NXT you're getting from me this week, kids. I'm up against the clock. So um, I'm going to watch it. I'm looking forward to it. I think the, the main two matches will be good. I got my fingers crossed for women's match. I think it will be very good. I hope I'm not wrong. Uh, they can The women's division NXT continues to pretty much deliver all the time. So I'm looking forward to that. I'll be interested to see what McAfee's role is going to be in that match and how much I'm sure he'll be protected. But I'll, I'm just anxious to see how he's going to look. So, yeah. Mark says North American title match will steal the show. You very well could be right. <laughs> to the moon. That's great. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So, bu -bu -bu -bu. so Eric says I watch BTL Monday's Guevara vlog on Tuesday and then Dark and Dynamite on Wednesday. Awesome, man. You've got like the whole combination of things there. It's pretty cool. That's the way to watch it in that order for sure. Shannon says War Games is going to be lit. Absolutely. I totally agree. Let's hit ratings before we hit the open floor here, kids. This week, AEW. You think Moxley versus Omega and Sting had something to do with this one? 913,000 fans compared to last week, 710. Last week was down for Thanksgiving. You guys know that, right? Holiday week and stuff. Um, NXT, 658 compared to 713 from last week. Yes, AEW killed it this week. The ratings are what they are, uh, good or bad, for your favorite or non-favorite company. We've got a few minutes left here, kids, before we take it home. Let's talk about it. What do you guys got for me? It's the open floor here on Tom Clark's main event. What you got? Elvis says, Tom, would you want to write, write for Raw? Number one, Elvis, they wouldn't want me. I don't have a background in journalism or TV or movies. Um, I'm not young and sexy. I'm old and sexy. 
<laughs> I'm not young as I was anymore. Nah. I uh, I would take a position writing for any pro wrestling company. I mean, it's probably not in the cards if I'm being straight with you. Um, besides, if, if I did that, who's going to do the main event? I have to do the show, man. You guys would miss me, right? Right? So, Eric said, do you ever think Tom Clark makes a heel turn? Oh, baby, I was heel for a long time. If Gary was here, he'd tell you. He and I were heel together. Trust me. It was fun, too. Being a heel is awesome. You know why? Because you can say anything. It doesn't matter. You can make a mistake and it doesn't matter. You can screw up and it doesn't matter. Because if you screw up, all you got to do is just turn to the crowd and say, this is all your fault. Being the baby face is hard. Really hard. Because, um, uh, you know, you have to be perfect all the time. Not easy. You have to make people like you when they really want to like the bad guy. And let's face it, I'm a heel now. Are you kidding me? Let's see. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Ron said, do you think people who lead WWE to AW better their career? I think it's an individual, uh, individual case by case, Ronnie, is my opinion. I think what might be good for John Moxley maybe would not have been good for John Cena. I think it's case by case. What do you need today to make you happy? That's the answer. That's the question, isn't it? And only you can answer that. I can't answer it for you. Your parents can't answer it for you. Your wife probably can't answer it for you. What do you need today to make yourself happy? You know what I mean? If it's a change of scenery, it's a change of job. Is it more money? Is it not enough? Is it less pressure? Is it less notoriety, more notoriety? What would make you happy today? It's case by case example. Shannon is plugging the pod. Everyone pay attention to Shannon and tell her well done. Don't forget to tune in after the show for the reveal of Tom Clark's 6M podcast episode. Shannon, you're awesome. This is why you're my favorite fan. Yes. Immediately after we sign off here today, and I didn't get to do this last week because we took a break. Immediately after the show today, bounce over to Tom Clark's uh, Facebook page or the Tom Clark 6M podcast Facebook page. You will get the episode reveal of episode 17. Last week's episode was a Montreal screw job. And for everyone watching and listening right now who was a pro wrestling fan, if you haven't listened, you missed a good episode. Okay? it's I think it was good. I think it came off really well. But next week's episode is going to be fun. And you don't have to be a wrestling fan to enjoy it. That's all the tease you get from me. Thank you, Shannon. Tim says, I think the inner circle will break up by next week. That'd be a mistake, Tim, in my opinion. They need to run with this as long as they can. In the same vein, Earl says, will Inner Circle break up or turn on Jericho or turn on MJF? I just want them to let it play out. I don't think it should be in any hurry to take, you know, put a bullet in this thing anytime soon. And she says, I know some people that make less money, but their surrounding makes them more happy. Completely agree. Completely agree. So. All right, kids. Uh, I think... Oh, wait, someone's asking for favorite favorite Wu-Tang song. Nathan says Triumph. I like Triumph. Um, <sighs> Bring the Ruckus is good, if I'm being honest. It's got filthy language. Um, God bless it. I'm, I'm terrible with the names of some of the songs by Wu-Tang for some reason. Mm, that's a good one. What are your favorite Wu-Tang songs? You guys just want to talk about Wu-Tang now? <laughs> we should have a Tom Clark's main event after party. What do you think? Like a post show for Tom Clark's main event. I'll just stick around for another hour. <laughs> it's good stuff, man. Protect your neck. That's, I mean, that's probably my favorite. It's, it's, it's a generic answer, but I love it. Anyways. Cream's good. So yeah, it's a good song. Yeah. Method man. Yeah. All right, folks, that's it for us. We're going to get out of here. Listen, everyone, please, please tune in. As soon as we go off air here, man, jump over to my Facebook page or Tom Clark 6M podcast Facebook page or both. If you got two electronic devices, for God's sake, double barrel, baby. Okay. You can see the episode 17 reveal 
You don't want to miss this, man. It's sure to be awesome. You're going to love it. I promise you that. And it is time for us to get out of here. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I appreciate your business as always. Hope you guys have a great weekend. All right? Thanks again, kids, for hanging out. We'll see you next time. Tom Clark's Main Events.